Hi. Welcome to another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. This week, Miss Erica is dressed like a reporter because we are going to learn about somebody who reports on somebody else to Paul. All right, let's get started. This week, be sure to read 1 Corinthians 1 together as a family. Parents, you can find fun, creative ways to explore 1 Corinthians 1 as a family in your parent email, so be sure to check that out. First, let's explore where we're at on our Big Bible timeline. Paul writes the letter of 1 Corinthians while he is on his second missionary journey. He writes it to the church that's in Corinth. Corinth was a city that was right on the water, and it's actually in modern-day Greece. Paul had planted the church in Corinth while he was on his second missionary journey. And he stays there for about a year and a half, and then he leaves and goes on to plant more churches. But while he's away, he actually has some people come and tell him, hey, things are not going well in the house churches in Corinth. And so Paul writes a letter, the letter of 1 Corinthians, to the church in Corinth to help talk to them about how every part of life should be different because they're following Jesus. We learn in 1 Corinthians 1 that there was a woman named Chloe living in Corinth. She was following Jesus, and she sends some of her people to find Paul and tell him about the problems that are going on in the house churches in Corinth. So I got my friend Chloe to read to us from 1 Corinthians 1. Take it away, Chloe. Hi, I'm Chloe. This is the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 to 17. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers, what I mean is that each one of you says, I follow, I follow Paul, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that you are baptized in my name. I did, I did baptize also the household of the Stephanes, But beyond that, I do not know whether I baptize anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Bye. Thanks, Chloe. Paul says here that the people in the house churches in Corinth were fighting over which church leader was their favorite. They were probably picking whoever had baptized them. And then they were saying, I follow Apollos. Well, I follow Paul. I follow Peter. And they were getting in these big fights and they were actually being mean to other people who were following different leaders. And they just weren't getting along. This would be like if at our church, some of you guys started saying, I only follow Pastor Steve. And some other kids were saying, well, I only follow Pastor Carl. If I heard you guys talking like that, I would be like, guys, that's ridiculous. And that's exactly what Paul says. Paul says, first of all, you all should be following Jesus. And that's it. He's the one who died for you. And then Paul says, I don't even remember which one of you guys I baptized. But it doesn't matter because Jesus didn't send me to baptize you. Jesus sent me to proclaim and announce the good news to you about who he is. I want to teach you guys a little bit about how the Roman Empire worked. Whenever there was a new king or a new emperor, the king would send messengers to all the towns all over the Roman Empire or the area where the king ruled. And these messengers would proclaim something. And they would always start their proclamations with this Greek word, euangelion, euangelion. And that just means good news, good news. And they would say, listen up, everybody. Good news, there's a new king. And then they would tell them things that came with this new king. So they would say, good news, the new king is going to lower your taxes or 
good news. The new king is going to give you bread every day. Whatever it was, and these people would be messengers proclaiming this good news about what this new king was going to do for them. And this is exactly how Paul describes himself in 1 Corinthians 1. Paul says, Jesus didn't send me to baptize you. Jesus sent me to proclaim the good news, the euangelion, about who Jesus is about what his kingdom looks like and what good things happen because Jesus is king. And you know what? Jesus is sending us on the same mission that he sent Paul on. Jesus is sending you to go be his messengers, to go declare his good news, good news, wherever you go, to declare that there is a new king on the throne and his name is Jesus. And he is going to give you new life. Now you might be thinking, who, me? I'm not special or important. Why would Jesus pick me for that? Exactly. That's the whole point of 1 Corinthians 1. King Jesus picked us to go and tell people about his kingdom, about how awesome he is, to go and proclaim his good news that there is new life plus so much awesomeness that comes because he is king. Jesus is inviting us, unimportant, unspecial us, to go talk about how important and special King Jesus is and all the awesome things that come with him being king. This week, I want to invite your family to pray in a very special way. Sometimes prayer is just declaring and proclaiming who Jesus is. So go grab a piece of paper. If you can find some big paper, that's even better. But normal paper will work too. I'm going to do it on the chalkboard so you can see what I'm talking about. First, I want you to write good news in bubble letters as big as you can. Fill the whole paper. If you're having trouble writing, see if your mom or dad can do it for you. Now I want you to work together as a family to think of as many things as you can that are good things that you get because Jesus is king. Remember, we learned how kings in the Roman Empire might give away free bread or lower taxes because it was their birthday or because they were king. But Jesus being king means so much more awesomeness for us. There's healing and forgiveness and freedom because Jesus is king. So work as a family to see if you can think of as many things as possible that are good things about Jesus being king. And then I want you to write or draw those things inside the bubble letters. And whenever you think of something, say it out loud. That's a way of praying. You're just proclaiming good things about who Jesus is as a family together. All right, guys, it's been so fun hanging out with you. Thanks for watching another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. This is a special report from Erica Thornton coming live from the scene. We're going to have another family large group on Sunday at Lake Akatink. We'll be back at the large shelter down by the water, and I can't wait to see you there as we celebrate King Jesus together. Hi, this is Miss Erica reporting live from the scene. We have heard many people talking about a ferocious, scary, terrifying monster roaming the streets. I haven't seen him yet though, so I think we're safe. That's great.